everyone, and welcome to Anime Club After Dark, the podcast that delves into all things anime, manga, and otaku culture related. I'm your host, Alex, and joining me tonight, I have our Emperor of Explosions, Riker. Yo, that's it. <laughs> and, okay, and our Czar of Source Material, John. Made in Abyss sucks. <laughs> you watched one episode and you skimmed the manga. <laughs> you haven't even gotten to the 127 hours part. Oh my god, can we save this for later, you salt-laden heathens? <laughs> yeah, sure. Anyway, uh, so tonight's episode is all about uh, live-action anime and manga adaptations. Um, and I think I'm going to go right into it by getting it, uh, by addressing the 8,000-pound gorilla in the room. And that is the recent release of Netflix's Death Note anime, or mo- live-action anime adaptation, which is more of an adaptation of the manga, but anyway. Um, so, to, I think to say that this thing is getting not-so-positive reviews would be an understatement. <laughs> I personally uh, didn't hate it. I just have a lot of qualms with um, how they portrayed like, bunch of the characters, the pacing. You know, it's it, typical shit that I have a problem with in every show and anime anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I've, like, I've, like I've, I've heard the the people that hate it the most are the people that watch the anime, and the people that didn't watch the anime, honestly, are pretty indifferent. I think towards the movie. Yeah, I think for people who aren't anime fans or even have watched or read Death Note, it, that's a lot of what I'm hearing from people like that. That it's just kind of meh yeah. to them, which is like, which is not what you want to hear if you've done an anime or manga adaptation from people who haven't seen your source material. Well, I've seen the originals, um, um anime. Like, all the episodes, I just honestly didn't care about it back then, and I honestly still don't care about it right now. (laughs) Was there any part of the movie you actually thought was well done? Other than uh, Ryuk? I've heard Ryuk was... Ryuk was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Willem Dafoe is a fucking perfect Ryuk. I will praise him endlessly for how he portrayed Ryuk in that movie, because it was really well done. That was the only thing I really enjoyed. Everything else was kind of just like, eh. Yeah, I mean, that was kind of my reaction to it as well. I mean, I love Death Note. It's one of my favorite things ever. I love the manga. I love the anime. I, I especially love the the, the uh, English uh, dub of the anime. I think it's better than the sub. Um, but yeah, it's it's not terrible. It's not unwatchable. It's certainly not Dragon Ball Evolution style of bad. But it's not great either. It's just kind of mediocre at best. I haven't seen it. I haven't, I haven't seen the, the uh, anime or... The <laughs> Netflix movie. I don't know. The Death Note just wow. doesn't appeal to me. Yeah, really? I don't know. I've never had a desire. I already know all the twists. Yeah. Well, you have kind of been spoiled on it over the years. Yeah, time. I mean, before I even knew what Death Death Note was, I knew all the big spoilers. So I just I feel like if I watched it now, it wouldn't really have much of an impact on me. Yeah, I guess that's fair to say. You know what the most disappointing um, I... part of the movie was? They what? didn't redo the fucking chip scene. <laughs> like, I was like, you know what? I would give this movie a passing rating if they do the dramatic chip. I swear to God. If they did it, I would have been like, perfect 10 out of 10. Everyone go watch Take the potato chip and eat it. And then, like, crunch. Crunch. <laughs> and it does that where he, he swings his hair. It's super dramatic. Oh, man. Um, I mean, there were certain other parts of, of, the, of the movie that I can kind of look at it from both sides like i don't mind the fact that they that they put it in seattle i thought if they were going to put it in america that's not a bad city to have it in um i don't mind that all of the characters are american except for watari (laughs) um who's still japanese um i don't mind the i don't like how they portrayed l though it's because he's black it's just (laughs) no it's not because he's black sure sure man racist it's not I am fuck you. I don't care that he's black. It's just he acts in a way that L would never act in the manga or the anime. It's yeah, like, he doesn't go out in public. The, the guy who portrayed L, his acting reminded me of like Power Rangers esque acting. <laughs> it was kind of, wasn't it? <laughs> it's just like it seems super silly to me because I'm like I thought L was supposed to be someone who's you know like quirky and just like eccentric, and he is kind of like that, but it's more like um. A confused autistic teenager is what they really portrayed him as. And I was just like, okay, then. Yeah, it's like he's trying too hard to be someone else and not, like, do the character his own Oh, life. God, and then that you know scene I mean? where he eats the freaking Skittles or whatever. I just cringed. And then throws them all over the place? I fucking just cringed. I was like, oh, God, please. You're... At least they did get that part of it right, that his, his affinity for sweets. Yeah, but, like, it wasn't cake. 
No, it it wasn't cake. It wasn't cake. No, but I thought they did that. I'm glad that they included that. Um, there were a lot of subplots in there that weren't part of the original source material. And not to say that all adaptations should have all the original plot points, but the ones that they chose to do for this live action version weren't exactly thrilling. Yeah, I'd agree. Um, especially the shit with Mia. Oh, man. Uh, have you guys seen the Japanese adaptation? Like, clips of the Japanese adaptation of Death Note? I, I've i seen the Japanese uh, the adaptations action of one? Death Note. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, Ryu the live action is... ones, yeah. Oh, oh he's so uh, bad. Not, he's like this CG... Not, not great. It's a yeah, mess. It's, it honestly... Like, the Netflix... I'm not going to say the Netflix one was good, because I haven't seen it, but it looks a hundred <laughs> times better oh. than what the Japanese version was. Even if the Japanese I think version even was John... more loyal to the source material. I think I think John would even agree that Ryuk actually looked pretty good CG in this movie. Oh, yeah. And not just sounded good, but one. looked good. It was really... He looks terrifying. When he first gets introduced, I was like, holy shit, this is really fucking cool looking. Like... Yeah, I, I, they did a really good job with Ryuk, and it's such a shame that nothing else in the movie really stands up as good as him. But yeah, um, nice try, Death Note. Try again. <laughs> Please don't try again. Yeah. Don't try with Death Note again. Just try with something else. Try with something else that actually deserves an, a, a live-action adaptation. Try with something more grounded. Yeah, like Fist of the North Star. No, don't do that. <laughs> Bebop. Cowboy Bebop, yes. Do it with Cowboy Bebop. People have wanted that for years. I Yeah, I actually think they could do Cowboy Bebop. Yeah? Who should play Spike Spiegel? I think Keanu Reeves would have really? been perfect back really? in the day, but he's a little older oh, okay. now. I mean, just, yeah, he's just a little too a, old to play that now. Just watch, like, John Wick. He kind of carries himself like Spike would. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're you're not wrong about that. That's for sure. Um, I tell you who, in terms of looks, would um do a good Spike Spiegel is um, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. Uh, I don't. I don't. He see actually kind of looks like Spike Spiegel. Oh, you haven't seen him actually dress up as Spike Spiegel? Because he no, has. I just don't think he has the. He doesn't have the personality for it. I don't. I no. I, I, I agree. But I'm talking. I'm talking in terms of think of like a Sherlock style personality. True, but I'm talking about just in terms of looks. Yeah. It, I mean, I think he's definitely. Possibly Bradley Cooper could pull it off. I would, yeah, I'd like to see that. But yeah, Netflix, try try Cowboy Bebop. It's a show that's pretty grounded and would do well in live action. But don't do yeah, that. I mean, no literally, the, the, the big fight scenes in Cowboy Bebop are just ripped from Jet Li movies. So. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> just copy those. All, uh, all I ask if they do uh, Cowboy Bebop live action is that they keep the opening song. At least oh, put it somewhere. They gotta, they gotta yes. get the seatbelts back together. <laughs> Yeah, to do to do the whole soundtrack, yeah. I would be so in favor of that. Yes, that soundtrack is amazing. Um, so should we move on? Yeah. <laughs> so Riker. Yes. The uh, the JoJo's live action movie didn't exactly get a thrilling uh, reception. Uh, no, in Japan it didn't. at least. I didn't. Well, it didn't. It didn't get as bad as I thought it was gonna be. I I heard some people say it wasn't that bad. They they also adapted part yeah. four, which is where. Rocky essentially is like, okay, I'm going to really start making some interesting character designs. So, yeah, really out there yeah. character designs. And and people wearing really weird clothes. And the, the whole world is super stylized and colored and stuff. I don't know. I, f- I feel like if they would have yeah, started I mean, with part in the manga, one, it would have been a much easier adaptation cuz it's just like a Dracula exactly. story. It's Victorian yeah, horror on steroids. basically. Yeah, I mean, but, and then you look at the at the anime adaptation for part four. It's bright colors. I mean, the fucking ocean is purple and the sky is yeah, yellow. I don't. Well, I mean, I know it was obviously to you know promote the anime and stuff like that. And I think part four is probably at this point the most popular part in Japan, if not part three. I thought part five was the most popular part in Japan. No, I think I think part four, or part three is, in terms of what's what's most iconic. Oh, I see. Yeah. Not necessarily what sold the most, but what's most yeah. iconic. It, it, well, most okay. iconic would definitely be part three, since Jotaro is essentially but, the face. And yeah. Joseph. He's like the face of the series. Uh, but do you think do you think this movie's gonna get a second part like they want it to? I don't I don't know what the I don't know how it did in the box office in Japan. I think I think if I if I read right it barely made back. I wouldn't be surprised if it make. did simply because if I'm not mistaken, I think Parasite got two movies, and the first movie was an utter flop. 
Yeah. Really? And it's still got a sequel. I could be wrong. I don't know. It's hard to believe that something with the name JoJo's on it doesn't sell like hot games. Yeah. <laughs> I want to go on that JoJo's uh, 3D ride thing. Oh, the one at, U- at Universal yeah. in Japan. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> God, that would be so much fun. Oh, field trip. Yeah, I want to go to Universal Japan. They have like an Evangelion ride. You want to go to Japan just to go to Universal Japan? Yeah. They have like an Evangelion ride, a JoJo's ride, um, a, an Attack on Titan ride. It's cool shit. One day, man. You and I got to go. Anyway, moving on. Um, God, John, do we have to talk about yes. this? Yes! Can we please pretend no. Initial D third stage does not exist? No, we, oh, we God. have to talk about another horrible adaptation, which I watched instead of uh, watching the, the anime version. I, I thought it was just the live action back when I was a little, little wee babby. Fucking Initial D third stage. Holy shit, what a piece of shit. Uh, oh, to be fair, the anime that it's based off of isn't any better. Oh, God, it's just... I mean, thank you, Studio Dean. What I think Initial D, you know, other than the Initial D memes, you know, gas, 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 and running in the '90s, and you know, all the all the deja vu memes, I love them all. Uh, I don't know why I didn't like Third Stage, quite honestly, other than kind of hammy acting, um, bad, bad, just stunts. Like watching <laughs> them drive, I was not excited. Like. Because it's fucking boring. Yeah. I mean, you know, in the show, it's terrible CGI, but, you know, it's a show from the fucking 90s. What do you want, right? Yeah. Soundtrack is awesome, though. Hell yeah. I love Eurobeat. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But, like, okay, so Initial D is, at least from the anime's perspective, is a a show that has been through four studios now. Four different anime studios. Three of them are actually pretty decent anime adaptations. One of them sucks. Um, I can tell you why third stage sucks, though. It's because that part of the manga that it's based on is really long and drawn out and not very exciting at all. It's more like character development than anything else. And there's not a lot of racing in that part of the manga. That's the main appeal of Initial D. <laughs> I know. It's like the manga is like, hmm, I really need to take a break from all this racing. What? Let's have the characters just talk to each other. It's like, no. no don't we want do more this. Nani? Hachiroku? <laughs> Deja vu. Deja vu. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Doing man. impossible gutter drifts, dog. <laughs> I'm telling you, though, that that is actually a, a show or an, a manga, rather, that could actually be worked well as a American remake live action adaptation. I'm telling you, what you could do is hear me out. We don't need it. We have Fast and Furious. <laughs> we had Tokyo hear me Drift. Out. It's enough. Yeah. Hear me <laughs> out. Hear me out, okay? It's about this kid in America whose dad goes to Japan and buys him an old rusty fucking Hachiroku. And it's the Hachiroku from the show. And the kid fixes it up and starts drifting around the world with it. And we can call it Initial D World That's Stage. That's pretty much the exact same plot as Tokyo Drift. Yeah, actually. <laughs> and Tokyo Drift was a good movie. Tokyo Drift was a well, good movie. Well, I don't know. All I remember is the freaking Tokyo Drift song. By the way, the Teriyaki Boys? Yeah. <laughs> I love that damn song. Anyway, yeah. The initial D, third stage. Don't watch it. Don't watch the anime adaptation either. Thank you so fucking much, Dean. That was back when Dean was terrible. Dean is God. Always been. You just didn't they know. They weren't it. back then. They weren't back then. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. All right, moving on. John, take it away with this All one. All right, so um, thus far, I've shit on a bunch of shows that are live action adaptations, and to me, there's only. Um, a handful of action live action a- adaptations that I actually do like. Uh, for the most part, I I'm fine with live action adaptations of like rom coms, like Lovely Complex and Itsura na Kiss. Like watching those, they're corny and stuff, but they are a romantic comedy, and I'm a fucking sucker for those. So they weren't actually that bad. Like the the, the acting wasn't bad, music the score is great, and they follow the source. Not all too faithfully, but it still gets, you know, the story across. And I still loved watching the live action adaptations of both of these anime, which are pretty old. <laughs> They're one of the um, first rom-coms I've ever discovered. Lovely Complex and It's a Kiss. Isn't Lovely Complex based on a manga from the 90s? Uh, Both of them are from the 90s, I believe. Yeah, lo- oh, I, okay. I started Lovely Complex. Is, that, is Lovely Complex the one where they have, like, height disorders? Yeah. yeah, the girl. The girl's really tall yes. and the guy's really short. I literally just started that like three weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, How is it's, it? It's good. It has like the same art style as One Piece. 
Which well, is it's old. It's old. The anime is from which like is wow, but I want to say two thousand five or no. I think it's older than that. No, maybe. I just remember watching Lovely Complex, and I, I just fell in love with it because it was. It's really funny to me, and yeah, it, it, it has those really like big funny, round the, eyes. The two main characters have like incredible chemistry. I know. Way before Toradora came out. Oh, this is two thousand seven. So it's two thousand seven. It's only oh, ten really? years old. It seems so much older. Wow, I didn't realize it was that new. Yeah. It's good though. It's it's worth a watch. I'm not super far into it, but I've liked what I've watched so far. Yeah, anime or live action, both of them are pretty good. Uh, Itzura no Kiss is also really good. I know no one else here has seen these because I don't think anyone watches rom coms except me. I, I don't do when I'm in like a specific mood. Me too. Oh, I just had a phase back in when I first started watching anime where I just would only watch rom coms. Right now, I'm more of in a, like an action phase than anything else. Berserker, <laughs> gotta love Berserk. Oh man, that's a that's a that's a that's an anime. Well, no, don't don't go off the anime. It's a manga that deserves a good live action adaptation. I would say the original anime is not bad. The ninety seven, yeah, the it's age. okay. It's okay. The new one sucks. <laughs> I still liked it. It's still Berserk. I'll love Berserk till I die. Read the manga, plebs. Also read the manga. Read the manga and then cry about hiatuses about learn to yeah. what is it what does he keep getting distracted by um uh, that idol game the idol master game? oh idol master yeah yeah he went on like he a keeps hel- helping idol master he's like oh man i can't stop playing idol master <laughs> you don't understand though idols are fucking big in japan it's it's they're like becoming big over here. half of the culture i know right they're actually touring in america now all these idol groups is like holy shit what's next Vocaloids? Oh wait, we already got those. Eh, I've only been to like three concerts. It's... Yeah, but there's a, there's like three Dude, or four Vocaloid concerts Miku, in America Miku every Miku year was now. On David Letterman. Oh yeah. And David Letterman was like freaking the fuck well, out. He was like, I don't know what the fuck this is, but <laughs> if this is what the kids like, then there you go. Oh man. Um, but yeah, Berserk. Make that a live action uh, movie I or see, show. I think. If you're going to adapt an anime into live action, it has to be grounded. And Berserk is not grounded. Guts carries around a sword that's as big as him. And he's already massive. <laughs> and it has, like, crazier than shit fight scenes. and I don't know. And it would be t- it would be a lot rape. of CG. I don't think live action would be, would be CG, able yeah. to capture the savageness of Guts when he goes into, like, Berserk. And starts just cleaving enemies in half. And there's, like, Guts... And blood just spewing everywhere. As he's literally just cutting a horse in half with his fucking giant dragon slayer. <laughs> but it's pretty good, though. Oh, dude, it's great. But I, I I don't think Berserk is something that I would watch live action. Just because I know they could never recreate that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Is there is there an uh, anime or manga action series that you think would actually do well in live action? That isn't currently um, being made or has been made? This is going to sound weird, but... I didn't like this series, but I, I think it has the potential to be live action if you if you kind of dimmed it down a bit. But Gate, I feel like since hmm. the main the main focus is is on the military side and the military, you know, yeah, it's pretty easy it's for just them the military. to just like, get props. Yeah, it's just become military propaganda. Yeah. I mean it, that's what that show Which is. is. It's literally kind of military what, propaganda. Yeah, it's kind of it, it basically they, they literally use Gate on uh, GSDF recruitment posters. With a healthy dose of a loli. Multiple lolis. Just yeah. That's true, multiple lolis. I remember when that when that show was airing, I remember people there was a story about people in Japan being angry at that show because it violates the one loli per show rule. <laughs> it's like really, don't you have something else to complain about? Apparently not. <laughs> Apparently not. Um uh, other action ones that I would have liked we, we'll talk about later. Okay. Well, you well, you were talking about rom coms. There is one rom com live action adaptation that I personally do like, and that's uh, Ore Monogatari or My Love Story. Um, okay, so you right or uh, Riker, you haven't seen the anime, have you? No, I've seen I've seen parts of it, clips. Like I, I saw the kissing practice scene and everything. The show yeah, looks good with the uh, with the with the yeah, saran wrap. It honestly looks perfect for a live action. <laughs> that scene is in the live action adaptation. It's fucking hysterical. Like, one of the great things about it is, yeah, they keep the lovey-dovey aspects of the rom-com part of it, but they also just kind of, much like the anime, 
they delve into the ridiculousness of it. Like all of the ridiculous scenes are kind of left in to the the live action, and they work really well as like slapstick comedy. And it's just as a, as a total package, it's well done. There are certain parts of it that are kind they kind of drag on in the live action adaptation. But overall, I thought it was a really funny and really well done live action adaptation of a romantic comedy with a fair amount of slapstick added in that wasn't in the original source material. Huh. It just work. It works for me. I don't know why, well, but it I works. Think, I, probably, I don't think it actually perfect. did very well. For I don't think it actually action? did very yeah. well in yeah. theaters in Japan. I think that genre in particular is perfect. Yeah, well, they're they're well more grounded than something like Naruto. Well, it's because with rom coms, it's not like unless it's a fantasy rom com, then that's a little bit different. But who does that shit anyway? <laughs> like like Konosuba. Yeah, well, Konosuba, is it really yeah, Kono, a Konosuba's rom a, though? I don't. It's know. a rom com. It turns into uh, one. He kind of probably he watched of, season he two. Puts he like in the latest book, he was just like, "All right, you know, this is the ship. We're moving on." So, oh, he actually defines the ship. Yeah, it, it, it like solidifies in the latest book, and he's just like, "All right, we're done with it." Like the characters <laughs> are like, "Okay, we're dating." Have um, you wait, wait, Riker? You've read the latest book, right? Well, I read the br- the breakdown. It's not fully translated yet. I, but but you know what yeah. happens. It's like he says, "All right, this happened. Moving on." Yeah, that's literally that's literally how it goes. Like <laughs> they talk, and she's like, "So, are we dating?" And he's like, "Yeah." And then like Aqua walks in or something, and he's like, "All right, moving on." And so he like <laughs> that's he, exactly he, how like, it goes. Okay, I I filled the fans' expectations back to Aqua being shitty, <laughs> worst goddess, <laughs> and Megamine being a cinnamon yeah. roll. I'm I'm surprised he actually went through with it, but I I don't really think he had much of a choice. And and as we all expected, darkness getting cucked. I mean that's that's how she'd want it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, um, I think overall you're right that uh, rom coms typically work better in live action than action or fantasy set stuff. It's just it's more grounded, even though rom coms typically aren't how romance actually works. <laughs> um. So moving on to something that is kind of fantasy slash science fiction. Um, earlier this year, we got a Hollywood adaptation of a Japanese property in Ghost in the Shell. ScarJo one. Yeah, thank you for it's pointing that out. That uh, bad. Like it's really it's, not. That it's bad. not as a standalone property. It's not that bad. It's, no. it's a. It's like a B version of like Blade Runner. If you've been itching for Blade Runner, because we haven't had anything like Blade Runner in the last 20 years, Ghost in the Shell does enough to itch that itch, but now we have a new Blade Runner coming out. So True, and we have a new Blade Runner anime yeah, coming by, out. Yeah, by the director of Cowboy Bebop. Of Cowboy Bebop, so, yeah, which was a shock just, to everyone. Uh, forget Ghost in the Shell, the ScarJo one existed. <laughs> I don't I don't think it was that bad. Like, I mean, the special effects I don't in either. Movie yeah, were insane. Good. Well, yes, it was beautiful. Uh, From a I visual loved how standpoint, they, that movie was amazing. I loved how they threw back in that um that like s- wailing singing thing that they did they do with the the songs. I love that shit so much. It's so like Ghost in the Shell. Ah, it's great. I love it. Yeah. I I really liked it. But I don't know. It's just <laughs> shades of shades of ReZero. How how they do the story in the the adaptation? I just did not like. Like I was just like, oh fuck this. It well, it was. I don't. It was clear that they were looking at the original 1999 film, and they didn't look at Stanley Complex at all. Yeah, because I mean, the ending, 19... uh, the ending was it was obviously they they changed it a bit at the end, but I mean, it was pretty much shot for shot the the ending of the original film where she's beating up the spider tank and she's ripping the top of it yeah. off in her arms. You know, spoilers. But <laughs> I mean, who hasn't seen the original Ghost in the Shell? If you're an anime fan. Chinoda. Chinoda. Always <laughs> Chinoda. <laughs> no, I'm serious. The last episode we did where he was on, he had to take off his headset multiple times because he hadn't seen half of the shit we were talking about. Yeah, I think he only was on for a total of, like, maybe 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And then and he, the only thing he talked about was Naruto. <laughs> That's the only thing he saw. Um, To me, Ghost in the Shell, I just didn't like ScarJo's acting. I didn't think she did the major any justice. That's just how I feel personally. Well, the the major's a super hard character to play. It, it's it's like yeah. playing Terminator in Terminator Two. She doesn't really show any emotion, but she still has to be like charismatic. And it, it honestly, she just felt it's somewhat bad. relatable. Yeah, I thought the way they handled the story overall though was not as bad as everyone said. No, it was. I didn't. I didn't think so at all. And 
my my one complaint with the film is that I feel like the end of the movie they rewrote due to the backlash of them hiring Scarlett Johansson to play. Yeah, that was so super forced. I I really I didn't, didn't like I, that. It, it honestly felt forced to me. It honestly yeah. was like, well, really inside she's Asian, but it's like, okay, you hired ScarJo. Move on. Like I mean, you don't have to. The people that were obviously complaining about that weren't going to see the movie anyways. So I didn't really see a point them trying to fix that. Plus, the the creator of Ghost in the Shell himself said he wanted ScarJo to play the role. So I don't. Yeah, I think a lot of that controversy that came up about her being white and not Asian was kind of bullshit. Yeah, like, for her character in particular, I think it's bullshit. People go, well, her name's Makoto Kusanagi. It's like, but she's a fucking robot. Wait a minute. Makoto? Makoto Kusanagi. Kusanagi. Motoko Kusanagi. Motoko. I always say Makoto, but Motoko. Motoko. Everyone everyone says it. Motoko Kusanagi. She, like... And honestly, I can't. I'm trying to think of another act actress that would like <clears throat> look the part because she definitely looked the part of the. Yeah, major. for sure. I don't. I don't know. I can't really think of another actress that would look the part. I can't either. I mean, I mean, if if you looked around long enough, you'd probably find someone. But I can't think of anyone off the top of my head now. I thought. I thought for the for the most part, the the supporting cast was pretty good in that movie too. Oh yeah, especially yeah, Bato. Right? Bato was excellent. I he looked just as badass as his anime counterpart. It's actually counterpart. interesting. So I watched that movie with my family, and uh-huh. my my parents don't know shit about anime. I think they've seen um, <laughs> they saw the Pokemon movie because they they had to take me to it in theaters back in the day, <laughs> and they've seen Akira before because I I did a uh, project on Akira in high school and I wrote about it and stuff. And I think my mom sat down. What and a weeb! But them watching this movie made them want to go back and watch the anime. Wow. Yeah. Really? Like, my dad was like, so this is based off of one of those cartoons? And I was like, yeah. It's like a sci-fi classic. And he's like, oh, well, we have to watch it together sometime. And my dad doesn't give a shit about anime. Though, the only time he's actually sat down and tried to watch anime with me was a regular at at Magic High School. (laughs) (laughs) He's a Onisama! Onisama! I terrible show and Space Dandy, which just confused him. <laughs> Space Dandy! Oh my yeah, God! So he hasn't, oh, he make hasn't a live action Space Dandy. The medium, but the the new uh, Ghost in the Shell movie made him want to watch the anime. Hmm. Make a live action Space Dandy with John Travolta as. Dandy. <laughs> Why? I'd watch that. I'd fucking watch that. I think Ghost in the Shell was all right. I. Regardless of how much I hate some parts of it, I, I did think it was all right as itself. Do you think it deserves a lot of the hate that it gets? Not really, no. After watching it, I was like, I don't understand why people boycotted this movie. So much so to like make it fail at the box office. I'm like, why? <laughs> so Ghost in the Shell. I don't, the action sequences I, were cool. Yeah, CGI even, was great. Even without the controversy, I don't really think this movie really stood a chance. Like, I mean, it was clear that they didn't think it stood a chance either because they put ScarJo in that role probably to at least try and sell some tickets, but maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I think I think a lot of people just gave it hell for no reason, and it, I don't think it deserves it. I think it's it's pretty it's decent as a standalone thing. Yeah, I, but... I mean, I I thought it was. I mean, I had a good time watching it, so that's something. Yeah, I hate about fifty percent of the movies I watched, and I, did, I didn't hate this one, so. <laughs> Um, definitely makes me want to go back and rewatch Ghost in the Shell, standalone complex. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I just want to listen to the English voice actor for Major. She's so good. Oh, uh, uh, Mary Elizabeth yeah. McGlynn? Uh, she is really good in that role. It's, like, iconic uh, to me. She's, it's one of the... She's all, she almost, like, exclusively a ADR director now, which is sad. Oh, huh. that is sad. Also, uh, trivia, qu- <laughs> trivia fact, she was in an episode of Star Trek Voyager. <laughs> you won't ever <laughs> shut up about that, I swear. <laughs> I won't ever. Um, you get to see her with a bunch of alien makeup on. Um, yeah, moving on. Um, so back in the day, Roni Kenshin was a really great anime, and in was? 2012, it still Roni is. Kenshin still is. Yeah. It still is. It like, still is a the great Batosai. anime. You, it's oh like, man, it's still let, one. Of let the me best let me just flashback real quick here. Back when it was on Cartoon or not a Cartoon Network on uh, Adult Swim. I would like. Yes. I was literally waiting every week to see the next episode. I think <laughs> me too. Not Adult Swim, though. 
Oh, that's right. Was it was Toonami. Yeah, that was that was before Toonami was yeah. a part of Adult Swim. Yeah, I love Toonami. Obviously, not enough to remember it. But anyway, Rurouni Kenshin every week, <laughs> dude. I'd always just wait to watch it, and I'm just like, oh my god, I want to see how he fucks everyone up right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love that show back in the day. I haven't watched it in years, but I bet it's still pretty good. I want to go back I, and watch it. I rewatched it five years ago, and I still like it. It holds up pretty well. It still holds up pretty well. Well, yeah, like not if I don't include nostalgia, it's still a pretty good story because you know it's Roni Kenshin's fucking yeah. Tosai, and but, the English voice acting is really good in my opinion. Oh yeah, it is. Uh, but back in 2012, Roni Kenshin was a pretty damn good live action yeah. adaptation it's, too. Again, one of the very rare action movies, action dramas that I like live action. It's very rare, other than rom coms for me. Like, Ghost in the Shell was kind of like, uh, eh, you know? But Roni Kenshin, just two thumbs up. You can't see me, but uh, two thumbs up. I loved it. <laughs> yeah, those movies were fantastic. They were. There's three yeah, of them, as a matter of fact. They're all good. Mm-hmm. And you know what? It, it's one of those things where it's such a good adaptation that I think it does the source material a lot of justice. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Like, a lot of a lot of live action adaptations don't even really great ones don't do the source material a whole lot of justice because there's so many liberties taken with it. But this one, Re- Roni Kenshin's live action movies did a really good job doing justice to the source material. I felt like I was watching just I was watching real people act out the anime, and it it gave me a huge nostalgia boner <laughs> to say the least. I just like fight scenes. I like action. Well done fight scenes. Yeah. And Roni Kenshin has him in spades. <laughs> Everyone should go watch Roni Kenshin. There is no anime. Oh, uh, just you like, should. right should. now, right after listening to this podcast, just, 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 just do it. Is it? Is it? Is it currently licensed? It is. Or no? It got a release by Funimation. Did it? Yeah. Oh, it had shit, a, I got a limited it. theater run. No, I'm talking about the anime. Oh. Um. I would have. I, I, I know that. I know that. I know that Funimation. Funimation. Yeah, I know that Funimation had the rights to the actual movies, and I actually did go see them in theaters. Yeah, I didn't I didn't have a chance to see but, them in theaters. Uh, as I think they also said they're gonna eventually release them on like Blu-ray as well. I think they are already on Blu-ray. Yeah. Oh they are, cool. I definitely want to buy them. <laughs> I definitely want to buy the anime too. <laughs> I don't know actually if it's licensed anywhere currently, but if it is, you guys listening should definitely go watch it. It's it's worth a watch if you if you like good shonen, go watch Rody Kenshin. <laughs> uh but Riker, I think you need to talk about the next one. Yes. So, I thought I'd bring this, uh, well, John and I both, I think all three of us have seen this, haven't we? Haven't we? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so. I haven't, re- I haven't, I haven't seen the source material, but I have seen the movie you're talking about. So, Edge of Tomorrow, which was the sci-fi summer blockbuster-esque of two, uh, 2012? 2014. 2014? 2014. It's a couple years old now. Um, which actually, it, it, it was released to really well- critic appeal and stuff it, it didn't do too much domestically but um a lot of people didn't know that it's a adaptation of a light novel and a manga series called all you need is kill and it's really good and i'm not like a super huge fan of tom cruise but he was really good in that movie and overall i think i yeah. think as as far as kind of changing a, a japanese source material to be more hollywood-esque i don't i don't think you can do much better than what they did in Edge of Tomorrow or Live Die Repeat. God, why did they change the title when they released it on home video? Know. Yeah, I don't know. I think that was the initial plan was to to make the movie called Live Die Repeat, and then they changed it to Edge of Tomorrow. I like Edge of Tomorrow. Edge of Tomorrow is very. I do like Edge of Tomorrow. It's a well, better it makes title. Makes more better. sense since it's like you know a movie about a single day. It's like Groundhog Day, night and nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> version. Yeah, the nightmare scenario of Groundhog Day, as if Groundhog Day isn't a nightmare scenario yeah. enough. But it's, I mean, I thought it was excellent. Like, I thought I thought it was really well acted. I thought it was really the the CGI was really good in it. The, um, the adaptation of the mech suits that the soldiers wear looked fucking awesome. In the yeah, movie. I love that. I love mech, but uh, and they had you know, they they I, had practical suits that like they were running around in on set. So. I didn't know that. Yeah, they, they I, I remember like... in in the early days of the podcast when you I think you were the one who brought up Edge of Tomorrow when uh we started the podcast like early on in the day. I I actually didn't even know it was an adaptation either. I thought it was just another Tom. Cruise. I didn't yeah, either. Yeah, most people don't. Um, the, well the the manga had well, it, it wasn't a... ever. 
North American release when the uh, movie came out. Mm-hmm. And then it, it got released, uh, I think, in 2015. And uh, now, apparently, there's going to be an anime series on it. The The manga's... Now, the, the movie Edge of Tomorrow wasn't exactly marketed as like a light novel adaptation or any kind of Japanese adaptation. No, it wasn't at all. I, th- I think there was only one little blurb in the credits that was like, original source material, all you need is kill by blah, blah, blah. Um, but for the most part, I, I feel like them... <laughs> kind of distancing themselves from like the anime industry actually did them you know yeah it helped, helped them, them more than it hurt them yeah maybe you're right i mean it, when you when you try and embrace like the anime industry then then people are going to expect that the source material is going to be converted faithfully and yeah you get you get the elitist yeah, out there yeah people like, like me <laughs> yeah exactly hey, here's edge of tomorrow I mean, you, go right. and you see it, and you're like, "Oh shit! This is the adaptation of All You Need Is Kill." Like, you learn after the fact. You're like, "Okay, that was pretty fucking cool." But I'm gonna go read the source material. To now. me, the source material is really good. The artwork's amazing too. To me, if if it's something that has really good source material, like if I've read the source material before, and then it gets adapted and it doesn't faithfully follow the source material, or at least make it better, then I I wouldn't like the uh, adaptation. Um, I mean, it's, that's not to say that an adaptation can't, you know, do its own thing. Like example is the, the Dark Knight movies, like those don't follow anything. And yet I still enjoyed them. True. That's just how I feel. Yeah. Like, if it, it, I think, I think there's some adaptations that the, if the more liberties they take, the better it could be received. Yeah. I feel like, well, I don't know. You got to think about it from like an artistic perspective too. Like the directors and stuff working on these movies don't necessarily want to be known as just the adapter of the source material like they want to put their own spin on it true yeah especially if it's a well-known director yeah. that gets attached to a project like this like i don't know james cameron or something yeah but i mean I, like they have a certain style they want to uh, they want to portray in what they're doing edge of tomorrow was an, an excellent adaptation it, it, it changed things like the, the main character in the, the light novel and the manga is japanese and i don't believe it takes place in london but they they changed the location and obviously Tom Cruise is not Japanese, so I you know, I mean Tom Cruise. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean now they have a sequel now, and I don't think the sequel is actually based on anything because the it kind of ends like the source the source material has an open ending. It's kind of hmm. it ends it ends a lot differently actually than the movie ends. But I really want to go read the source material. Yeah, now. it's 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 really good. Um, I'm I'm looking forward to the the sequel too. I'll I'll see that in theaters. Yeah, it's definitely worth a watch if you've never seen it. Edge of Tomorrow or Live Die Repeat. Yeah, I think it's worth a watch. Whatever and the I hell think they're the calling it now. Is worth a read and eventually worth yeah. a watch when it gets adapted into an anime. But yeah. so Riker, you want to keep yeah. going? <laughs> so I thought I'd bring this up. Uh, none of us have seen it, obviously, because it's not out here. But uh, the Gintama live action movie. I never thought it would be good, but it actually released to mass critic appeal and mass fan appeal in Japan. And it's doing incredibly well. I think it's the number one movie in the in Japanese box office this year so far. Um, and it just released in 8,000 theaters in China, which is going to be huge. Um, I think... So Gintama is... <laughs> I don't really know how you would adapt this series properly into live action especially when like the series is so based on its voice acting Mm -hmm. but they somehow did it um and i i totally i guess they just embraced the absurdity like if you go into this if they took this movie and they're like this is gonna be gintama and they're gonna riff about how they're suddenly you know a a real life adaptation (laughs) like you, you could do a lot with that and I think that I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's what they did. I can, the marketing campaign for this movie was really well done, too. It wasn't trailers and stuff. It was, like, set clips of the actors, like, pulling pranks on each other and doing, like, ridiculous Gintama-esque shit to each other, which I think also... It was an, an entirely print-run marketing campaign, yeah. wasn't it? And it, I mean, the movie's... Which is very risky for a movie. The movie's done incredibly well, and I don't think anybody thought thought it was going to be good but i guess with i don't know i i mean i i just read that it has the largest japanese film release in chinese cinema history now it beat your name in wow China. so like 
I mean, I, I'll I'll see it. I think it's getting a U.S. release, but I just thought I'd bring it up because it's apparently a live action adaptation that we haven't had a chance to see yet. But it's apparently really fucking good. I mean, I love Gintama. I'm definitely gonna watch it because <clears throat> it's. I want to see how they translate this. Like, how yeah, the fuck? I'm you... really hoping they just like <laughs> like the movie starts with that same like iconic shot outside. Yeah, the, the, like every uh, time house, they're doing a New Year's episode. The, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like what, what they do to save animation budget in the show. Yeah. And I hope they talking, use the sunrise. I hope it's like them being like, "What the fuck? <laughs> we're we're in real life now. What the hell's going on? What, this is 3D." <laughs> like they did a live action episode of Gintama before, but it was just mannequins wearing their clothes that they like moved around, um, which was hilarious. So, I guess Gintama's, like, at that point, it's it's a really ridiculous action series. Like, in the arc they're, they're adapting is the first serious arc in the show. And it has, like, crazy shit where, like, the guy swings at him with his giant katana arm. And Gintoki jumps and lands on top of the sword and shit. And they're fighting on flying boats. And, like, I can't... I honestly didn't think this was going to be good. But I guess Gintama's a series that's so off the wall that... They could essentially do whatever they want. I mean, if they, as long as they keep all like the funny jokes and the, if they the keep banter the humor, it's the fine. Kid. Like the action, yeah. they could even make the action part of the humor. Like them trying to do the crazy anime shit that they do in the anime, but it like not working, and then joking about it. <laughs> or like they do, uh, <laughs> they jump up and attack, and they have like people in just like green suits just carrying them, <laughs> just lifting. Them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I mean, there's so much. Gintama is a series that's just so ridiculous and it constantly breaks the fourth wall that I, I, I guess they they fucking pulled it off. They got the humor they, right. They could just turn it into a they could turn it into a straight up action comedy like Rush Hour. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that I mean, it, well, I, it's it's probably gonna go get ahead. a U.S. release if it's doing this well. I would think so. I mean, that's actually been a, a big trend we've seen recently is all these either anime and live action movies getting worldwide releases and releases here in the U.S. for specifically. Yeah, I was on a, I was on a flight um, and they had the. I I hope that's I hope that's a trend that's continuing. Yeah, I was on a flight when I went to Scotland and they had the uh, they had the live action adaptation of uh, Koei no Kitachi, I think. Was that the movie that had a live action adaptation? Yes. Alongside its yes. anime? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, they had that yes. on there. I didn't watch it, but I should have. Yeah. Um, well, speaking of things that uh, we're just now getting to something that we're going to get soon, um, I think it's a good to wrap this up with, uh, well, Full Metal Alchemist. Why not? Um, so, was it next month? or is... Yeah, it's next month, December... isn't it? October. Uh, so, it's going to premiere in October, but it's going to be released December 1st everywhere. Okay, so okay, so like a limited yeah. release and then a full release in a couple months after that. Okay, so the premiere apparently is next month, um, but the world the release is in December. So soon we'll be getting a Full Metal Alchemist live action adaptation. Um, I don't know who asked for this. I don't right. know if it'll be any so good. So just for a little background, it's supposed to cover the manga and all of the story, the whole thing, the entire the movie? whole thing. How? I don't know. That's the article that I read about it was like, yeah, they're gonna tell the full metal alchemist story all of it <laughs> and i'm just like the entire manga series How? yes if you want to talk about some shitty pacing i i have no idea cut, they're just gonna have to like cut shit out and then uh something else they change is they they make uh they make him 20 years old instead of 15 edward i can kind of understand that i can uh, i i could live with that i mean that doesn't bother me so much um i assume they're keeping the same age gap between him and alpha I, I have no idea That'd oh, and so Alfon- weird, though, Alfonso is going to be all CGI. So young, he's going to be all CGI too. I'm like, oh god, why? Ah. I-, I will say I have seen some of the some of the uh, trailers that have him in it, and it actually doesn't look half bad. He's all CG though. Yeah, it's completely CG, but it doesn't look half they bad. Couldn't just get a guy to oh. walk around in a suit and then dub over a voice. That'd be fucking hot as hell. Yeah, but he's getting paid it? fucking I- hundreds of thousands of dollars. Really. As bad as these voice actors get paid, you really think he's getting these are actual paid live action Japanese stars. These guys get paid a lot more than anime voice actors. If they put someone in a suit, it'd be a uh, stunt man at best. Yeah, that's true, but I mean, still, it would look so much better. I, the CG that I've seen so far looks halfway decent. From so, what I've learned, but uh, CG in in Japanese live action films is usually 
like the not B, good B version of like Hollywood CG. <laughs> like B movies, like old seventies B movies. Like it's, it's not it's not up to snuff to what we're used to. That's just because they don't have the resources. Yeah, I know. I'm not. I mean, I'm not saying big it's Hollywood fearful, studios do. It doesn't look good to our standards, at least. They could always outsource it. But yeah, I, I, it's going to be interesting to see. I'm pretty sure this is going to be something that's going to get a pretty wide release here in the states. I don't maybe think it's going to get. I think it's I think it's going to get a wide release, and it's definitely going to get a release in the states. I don't think it's going to do very well. We'll see. If they're if they're actually going to do the entire manga series in a single movie, that number one, that's a huge mistake, and number two, it has don't. the same look as the Attack on Titan films. <laughs> like it looks just like those movies. Like, and those movies are awful. We could have talked about those, but they're awful. I mean, why why talk about something that we all agree on? <laughs> and that that's a uh, that's actually kind of a, an an interesting take on it, where they they had to change the source material because the source material was so rooted in everybody being European that <laughs> that they were like, uh, we're just gonna rewrite it, and they live in Japan, and they're all Japanese. And the only country left is Japan. It's terrible. But beautiful. Terrible. <laughs> uh, anyway, I think that's a really good spot to end it. What do you guys think? Sounds yeah, good. I think we covered everything. We've sh- we've shit on enough tonight. I, think. Uh, I was gonna we say a lot, maybe about we a lot of good stuff too. I was gonna say let's yeah. shit on Tokyo Ghoul, but we didn't get to see it at Anime Expo, so fuck off. Whatever. Oh, did you guys hear the uh, main sh- actress sh- in that? And, like went fucking crazy and is in like a cult now. Yeah, I heard about that actually. Yeah, she like went nuts. She found Scientology. She, no, Good she for her. like was doing like blood rituals, <laughs> where she was draining her okay, blood. Okay, does she does she actually but does she actually realize Tokyo Ghoul is just a show? It's just a manga. Uh, it was like it's it was like real. some weird satanic shit, and then she quit acting before they finished the second movie. So they had to refilm yep. the second movie because they had to replace her. Yep. This is what happens when weebs <laughs> lose control. It's just, it's just you can a manga. See pictures of her like Don't. blood ritual room and stuff online. I I'll Gross. pass. <laughs> I've seen way too much shit from Japan in my time to know that this is not going to be good. Yeah, that's crazy though. But anyway, yeah. Um, I mean, if Show had been here, sure, we could have talked about the Tokyo Ghoul movie, and he could have told us how shit it's going to be. <laughs> but anyway, uh. I'd like to thank all of you out there for dropping in to listen to us for this episode. We hope you enjoyed it because uh, we enjoyed bringing it to you. If you want to check check out previous episodes of the podcast, you can find us on SoundCloud and iTunes. Um, if you want to keep up with what we're doing and have some fun because, you know, you want to have fun with us, you can join our Facebook group, follow our Twitch channel, and visit our website. Um, and if you have any questions, comments, concerns, criticisms, um, fucking, I, I don't know, I was going to say something funny there, but fuck it. Uh, feel free to shoot us an email. Uh, links to all these things are down below in the description. Um, yeah, so as always, uh, I have been Alex, and I will see you next time. Say goodnight, everyone. Yeah, this sucks. <laughs> what? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Just end. Cut. Cut. Hit, hit stop. We're done. We're out. We're out.